Hey YouTubers, how you doing? Today I'm going to make a uh, Predator's Cardboard Mask. It's not my build, it's from this guy here, from Epic Cardboard Mask. Guy's a uh, prop builder, he does a lot of cardboard work, some really remarkable stuff. I'm going to leave a link in the bottom that uh, takes you directly to his uh, mask build, the Predator Mask build. But I suggest you check out his entire channel, maybe subscribe, just some unbelievable work. Uh, anyway, the point of my video is not to reinvent the wheel. You know, you really should go to his video, uh, check out the step-by-step -step, uh, build, as well as get the uh, templates from him. And the templates are, are cheap. I think every one of his templates are like uh, $1.99, less than $2, and it's well worth it. Uh, just unbelievable. Uh, my videos uh, sort of make uh, some suggestions they're making some things a little easier, maybe a little cheaper, as well as some of the changes that I've made that I thought would add a little more detail, uh, such as I've added some plastics, uh, added some wood, and added some uh, uh, real uh, LED lights to it. Uh, anyway, let's get going. Okay, my first tip is this. Uh, when you get the templates, uh, seems like you made the templates directly out of... Uh, the cardboard cutouts he had made, took pictures of. And uh, if you did this, you know, if you wanted to print out all this stuff as is, as you got it from him, it's going to cost you a lot of ink, you know, to try to print out all these pages. I think uh, this particular cutout, I mean, or this project, should I say, uh, has about 17 sheets. I'm not sh sure. I don't remember exactly how many, but somewhere around that. And some of his other projects have, I mean, 70s uh you know, sheets in the 70s or so. So I don't think you want to be spending that much money on ink uh, uh, on a $1.99 template. So what I did is before I printed out, this one I printed out as is and then realized what was going on. So what I did after that, after I got the one one done there, I said, there's no in the world I'm going to do all of them like this and use up all my ink. So what I did was before I set it, sent it to printer, I just uh, went into the uh, editing and uh, just lined it up as much as I possibly ca ca can. And pretty much what's almost white, but with uh, gray tones. And so you get like this. So you're going to get much less uh, ink uh, usage from your uh, printer. And you can do, you know, a lot more. Anyway, uh, another thing he did also is that it comes like this, four different uh, sections, and you're supposed to cut them out individually in the cardboard, and then he glues them together. You'll see when you watch his video. So what I decided to do was to cut the templates out and actually glue the templates together to make one full unit of it like this. So then I can cut out this entire one piece in cardboard without having seams, glued seams in it. Uh, second step that I decided to do with uh, all of the uh, templates is instead of just uh, cutting templates directly into the cardboard and that's all there is, it's all done, is each of the templates, I made a uh, more solid template with some eighth inch uh, veneer. And uh, the same thing with all the other templates. So I put it on eighth inch veneer first and so now I have these permanent templates here that's lasting and not, not going to fall apart and I can use it in case I want a second build, you know, for someone else or, or if I want to make a second build and then make a lot of uh, changes, alterations uh, to the Predator itself, Predator helmet. You know, maybe there's uh, another addition and they'll change the helmet out. Who knows? Anyway, uh, a good thing to know also... And, when you lighten it up like that, most of them, you'll have some shadows that you can actually see the edges. Some of them, like this one here, it comes out so wide you don't have any shadows on it. So it might be a little difficult to see the the edges of what you're going to cut out. So you have to be cognizant of that. You know, or I found, you know, you just change the lighting. If it seems like it's too light for you, change the lighting around uh, uh, wherever you're looking at it to do the cutout. And it may help you a little bit. Uh, some of this stuff... He wants the cardboard to go in a certain uh, grain and, you know, the grain to go in a certain direction. 
and some of it, it doesn't matter. He tells you that on the templates. What I found also here is that when you printed it out, especially when I did it, uh, lightened it up like this, you can actually see which uh, way the grain's going on the uh, template. So you'll know exactly which ones that he wants the grain to go a certain way. You know exactly where that, that grain is going. You wouldn't even have to read it off of the uh, uh, template. These already cut out. I don't have to go back to the scraps of paper that I cut out of or go back to my uh, PDF to see which way he wanted the grain. I can pretty much see it directly on the uh, template itself. So those are my uh, initial thoughts on it uh, to make things a little easier for you. In this section, he's doing the hydraulics uh, for the face mask. He's doing it in cardboard. Of course, because that's where he's doing everything in cardboard. That's his uh, motif. I decided to do this in wood. I just want you to see uh, exactly how he did this and then uh, see the changes in how I did it. This is one of the situations where the grain of the cardboard would make a big difference. It would make it easier to roll this up if you're doing this with the cardboard. And I cut off small parts from it. That I glued on both sides of the other one. Uh, the way I handled this particular one was I started with some a uh, half inch uh, dowel and I cut a piece one inch uh, long and some uh, quarter inch dowel, dowel and I cut two pieces a half inch. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. I cut this uh, two inches long. Uh, after I got the uh, the one inch piece on the uh, half inch dowel. I drilled a hole, a quarter inch hole directly through that one inch piece. And then I just uh, hammered in the, uh, or squeezed in the quarter inch dowel in between that piece. So in essence, you have that one piece of a uh, half inch dowel uh, with a two inch uh, uh, piece of the quarter inch dowel going right through the center with a half inch exposed on each side. For the hydraulic tubes uh, and the piece that I made, that same uh, section, like I said, with the half inch and quarter inch dowels, I drilled the uh, three small eighth inch holes inside of it. On the right side of the helmet, I glued the three pieces here and here. So those are the hydraulic tubes. That... And for the hydraulics coming through instead of cardboard, I have some uh, small two strand alarm wire that I'll glue directly inside here, inside each of the holes to run down to the bottom of the, of the helmet. Instead of running the uh, hydraulic wires just to the back inside of the mask, I decided to run it right along the side into the sort of cheek section. Uh, at first I was gonna stick it directly into that section, but then I decided why not uh, put some sort of module there, you know? So it's just a matter of a uh, small piece of quarter inch uh, trimmed wood. I painted with the same fluorescent paint that I uh, painted the top nodule. And uh, as I said before, I utilized uh, alarm wire as uh, the hydraulic tubing and just uh, stuck them in with a little hot glue. To do that, put it behind the holes and with a pencil, define the eyes. Next, I darken the cardboard with a pencil. Pay attention to darken a bigger surface than the eye alone. What I decided to do about this, instead of using some uh, drawing, cardboard that's shaded in, in was I was going to put in some pl actual plastic lenses. I tried first with some 8th uh, inch uh, plexi, but it was all too thick, even though I bent it and uh, heated up and bent it, uh, to get the proper shape. The plexiglass I use, uh, like I said, to get it the right shape inside without being too obstructive in the inside uh, uh, would break. So I ended up using just uh, some thin plas uh, clear plastic from a <laughs> old cookie container. 
Now you can see a little uh, glue residue on, on the lens here, but uh, that's going to be shaded in. I think I can shade that in with a marker and still uh, actually get the lasers to actually come through. And like I said, I glued it in. Uh, this uh, glue that I used in there, it's, it's supposed to be a clear cork. It starts off white. Uh, it's taking a little time before it'll uh, lighten up, but it really doesn't make a difference in the inside of the mask. Okay. Uh, what I did with the plastic lens is uh, at first was uh, covered it with black magic marker. And believe it or not, it actually worked. It darkened the lens uh, and uh, the laser still should sh sh shine through it. But uh, I couldn't get it without the marker leaving streaks and lines inside of it. Uh, so it didn't look just right. So what I did decide to do was I got uh, some window screen, very dark, coarse window screen, and I decided to line the inside of the lens. And that way we have uh, this sort of diffused, uh, dark uh, color coming through the lens, and yet lots of space. For the light to come through. I thought it gave it a good uh, look also. Let's see here. Just glue that in. Get to the right side. Yeah, that's good enough. And I think you can see what I, I'm saying. It gives it a much better look. Also, they have slightly dried. And I made piles and piles visible. of these little uh, okay. rolled up pieces of uh, paper then so you could do the dreads. It seemed like uh, just too much work uh, as far as I was concerned to, just to get that effect. So I was looking for a, a little better way to do this. Because he actually has to make Next, dozens and dozens of like this it. and of three or four different uh, sizes and then tie them together. I'm letting, you, letting this roll through so that you can see just how much work's involved with getting this done. Like this. By the way, if you feel like you need to see more about the specific part of Me Be Sure too fast, sign up for free to my email list in the description below and you will see a free time lapse video start to finish of entire construction, as well as additional information and pictures of this craft. Then I made several more in different sizes. I made this one, which will be the tips of the dread, in a slightly different way. As I did before, I made braids, but I cut the tip of the pieces at different levels to make them thinner on the tips. Next, I glued them together that way. Then I made a second type of thread like this. I made 15 of each kind. Lots of work. 
afterward using thin pieces of cardboard. I covered the separation of the dreads. So the way I decided to make the dreads was, uh, first I got some rope, you see very closely. I painted them black. I cut it into maybe 18 inch strands, you know, whatever is more comfortable for you. I figured enough to hit the back and have a little overhang uh, underneath. Okay, so I put three ropes together in a triangle form. I glued in between the three of them, just Put a little bit of glue on one of them and then squeeze the other two up against each other. I got on there. Then I used some uh, twine, some very thin uh, twine or string, very tough though. And then I wrapped it around tightly and tied it off, uh, maybe every uh, three or four inches. And at the end, the tip, I thinned it out just the same way he did, you know, leaving just one roper there, and then taped it off. Uh, I needed one more rope for the last section. I, I didn't want to go buy a big section rope. So what I did was slip in a uh, old uh, HDMI cable piece in there. And that's probably something you can use also if you got a bunch of old HDMI cables or some black cable around that thickness. You can actually use that itself for the hair. Get off of there. Look at here. Leafs. So that's my idea for the hair. Or the locks, should I say. This is what he's using for the laser housing. Then cut roughly this back here. And glue this one over here. Then we move what of the hole. And glue this part here. All the templates that you need are in the description below. But keep in mind that even with the templates, you probably have to fit your own pieces to your own construction a little bit. Because at this point, there is no chance that they are exactly the same as mine. I made three more small rollers like Those this. Those are the lasers themselves. I sand down the tips to make them wander. And I glued the three of them inside this one. Okay, when I uh, decided to do my laser housing, I used a uh, piece of three-quarter uh, Schedule 40 uh, plastic uh, electrical uh, piping. Cut a small section out. I think this one's maybe about an uh, inch and a half or so. You know, that's uh, the preference and how you make your mask and figure that out. Uh, so I have... Uh, lasers that I bought uh, on Amazon and I'm going to uh, put a link uh, to all of this stuff on the video also so you'll be able to get get it. Now these are on dangerous lasers where they're going to blind you or cut a hole inside of you. Of course it's uh, still you know, not a good uh, thing to do uh, shine inside your eyes or anyone else's eyes. I bought a uh, push button because I want to be able to turn it on and off even though I did get the uh, battery case department 9 volt battery case department with an on off switch so I could use it that way also if I wished all right I put the three of the lasers together you know reds to reds blues to, uh, to blues as you can see here connected them onto that same alarm wire that I was using for the hydraulics same type of, you know, wire, same exact one. I cut a little tiny piece of plexiglass and I glued the lasers flat down up against them, trying not to get any on the face of the uh, uh, lasers. You know, just along the sides or hold it inside there. Now I just uh, slide the tube onto the uh, laser and I have a nice tight fit here. 
Do I have the laser with the housing? Using gray cap of paper and a mix of wood glue and water. So, although I did uh, use his uh, light uh, water and glue mixture, what I found is I put on some uh, regular glue onto the surface first, dip the uh, brush into a little bit of the water mixture, and then brush on the uh, undiluted glue, <coughs> excuse me, on the surface, and that made the paper stick a little better. Uh, the paper that I use, like I said, it's thicker because it's the same, you know, drop uh, sheet paper. Uh, so if you probably use, like I said, the paper that he recommends in his video, which he has a link to all of the products he uses also, uh, it may be a lot easier for you just to use the, the water and glue mixture. You wouldn't have to do the extra stuff. But I recommend you make it as stiff as possible so that you could uh, uh, assure a nice adhesion. The plastic tube for the laser housing, I actually slid down, slit, or cut a, a good section of it off the back end, leaving, you know, a quarter inch uh, for the full circle in the front. Then I glued it across the edge with a, enough of a hole to come through the back end so I can get the wire and the lasers to go through. Okay, now I'll run the wire through for the lasers. Figure out exactly which angles I want the lasers to face. I think I want it like this. And then just put a little glue on the surface of the uh, housing tube there. Really don't need much. I'm going around the whole thing, but that's not even necessary. A little touch is more than enough. And this was a perfect fit almost, so it should line up perfectly there. The only thing is, <laughs> I forgot that I actually want to spray that ahead of time, but that's not going to be a problem. I'll just put a little. Uh, blue tape across the front, a little circle, and that will cover that for when I paint that housing. Could even leave the way it is. It's uh, gray like the mask, but uh, I'm going to make it uh, nice and unified. Okay, so we have that all taken care of, painted up. I temporarily uh, connected the laser up with my 9-volt battery pack here. So we know that's an operation. I didn't calibrate this so that it could be, you know, a perfect little triangle, but at so far away or anything like that, which you can do. And there's a, a another guy that's working with the lasers uh, on YouTube. Uh, his name escapes me right now, but I'm going to put a link to his uh, page also. That way you could uh, see how he calibrates lasers, even put in uh, resistors and, uh, you know, uh, rectifiers or whatever not to, to keep the uh, brightness equal between lasers, even when the battery starts to go down. Uh, 
Okay, I glued down the wires to the laser to keep any pulling off of it. I put a little tape there just to hold it still until the uh, glue dries. That way, if there's any little accidental tug on the wire, it won't uh, tear the wires out of the uh, laser pointers. That wire is very thin, even though I have it uh, connected very well. I have it crimped. So you got to make sure that uh, you either crimp those wires well or you solder them. Uh, just twisting them and uh, covering with tape or something, or even wire knot, uh, probably is not going to do it. Okay, I just finished up the uh, laser lighting. And uh, as you can see, first thing I did was I uh, connected a battery pack and I made a little pouch just to slide that in and out of it. It's taped in, you know, to keep it from sliding out right now. But uh, that's so I could change the battery itself. I wanted the battery to be uh, integrated into the helmet itself. And I connected, of course, also these little LED, uh, laser lights for the eyes as well. Maybe later on, I'm not sure, I'll put in the uh, uh, lights so it, uh, the eyes will flash like the original Peter's uh, light, uh, eye light flash. They don't really have a laser lighting in the original. It just has a bright flash to it. But uh, right now, I'm just going to deal with the laser deal. So that's all connected in with this uh, cord coming along the side and running down. I'll leave a long section of wire there. And at the uh, end of that wire... I could, uh, I will put in a push button to turn it on and off. Uh, that's the purpose of, you know, this is not a wearing helmet. I'll, when I hang it up or mount it, wherever I mount it, uh, which would probably be high. I don't have too much uh, space any walls inside my garage, workshop, exercise room, uh, uh, art studio here. So uh, what I'll do is the, I'll have that wire running down farther enough to this button where I can operate it without uh, reaching up in, uh, on walls and the ceilings or wherever I put this to try to turn it on and off. Pretty much that's the end of the bill here. With the laser to the eyes, I want them to stay in a specific spot. So I just had this little plastic strip that I crisscross in there. I, I actually put a couple of small uh, screws in there also to hold that in place and then glue the laser light through the little holes inside of that. Okay, here's the final product.